In this video, we are going to discuss the basics of titrations. Titrations uh, are used primarily to determine the concentration of an unknown, and they are not unique to acids and bases. So you may remember earlier in the year we did something called a redox titration, and basically all that we're doing with the titration is we're going to reach this endpoint. And if we set up the um, titration well, at the endpoint there's going to be a color change. And um, with that color change, that is when we're done with the uh, titration, and that's where our moles of one thing here in this unit acids and moles of base are in their stoichiometry ratio with acids and bases that ratio is almost always one to one with other reactions that ratio is actually not usually one to one but with acids and bases it typically is one to one and with an ass with a, a titration we have a burette and typically what is in the burette is known and so we can know the molarity, and we can know um, the volume. We can always know the volume. But um, underneath it, we might have an Erlenmeyer flask, and we will know the volume. You always can know the volume, but we might not know the concentration. OK. There's many different types of titrations. There's if you titrate something strong with each other, and when you titrate something strong, at the equivalence point, um, pH is going to be about 7. You could titrate something weak with something strong. Um, typically, what is in your burette will be strong. Okay, That way, things just go a little bit more predictable and faster. And um, if we titrate a strong acid with a weak base, the acid will dissociate 100% where the base will not. And so what ends up happening is that a lot of people like to think about it in terms of the strong one winning the titration, but the pH will be slightly acidic if you titrate with a strong acid and a weak base. On the flip side, if you titrate with a weak acid and a strong base, the base is dissociating 100% where the acid is dissociating probably less than 5%. And so at the equivalence point, because your base has dissociated at a much higher percentage, you're going to be slightly basic. And then who knows what would happen if you uh, titrate a weak acid with a weak base because it all would depend on the relative strengths and dissociation of each the uh, the acid and base this is really not a practical titration okay um, we see titration curves all the time where um, the x-axis is volume added here because the pH is increasing over time this must be base that is being added and then the pH Okay, um, to find the equivalence point, what you're going to do is, I mean, you can do it mathematically, but to do it from the graph is what you're going to do is you're going to find this flat region where this slope um, is very, very high or undefined. And essentially, the midpoint of that area is going to be your equivalence point. And then you can line it up with the pH, and you can find the pH at your equivalence point. OK, we know that this first graph here is a strong acid titrated with a strong base. There's a couple clues. One, this, the pH starts very, very low. You can have a weak acid that has a low pH. But the way you have to um, get that to happen is you have to have a high molarity of that weak acid. Because with weak acids, most of the H's don't actually dissociate. 
so they're not really contributing to your pH, but if you get a high enough concentration, those H's will add up uh, as you increase your concentration and it'll decrease the pH. But here's how I know that this is a strong acid titrated with a strong base. At the equivalence point, the pH is seven. Okay, so that means it must have been a strong, strong titration. Same thing here with a strong base titrated with a strong acid. Um, my clue that it's a strong base is that it starts really, really high, close to 14, but my uh, confirmation of that is that the pH at the equivalence point is seven. A weak base titrated with a strong acid, here's how I know it's a weak base. One, the pH is not super, super high, but it is kind of high, but the pH at the equivalence point is less than seven. And so that means it must have been a weak base titrated with a strong acid. On the flip side, a weak acid titrated with a strong base, uh, the pH at the equivalence point is greater than seven, so that's how I know it was a strong base uh, being added to a weak acid. A polyprotic acid is an acid with multiple H's. And so because of that, we're gonna see almost like uh, two equivalence points. There's one here and there's one here. So this must have had two H's that could have been removed. So maybe this is H2SO4. And we get something that looks a little bit crazy. Um, we have the pH for the per first uh, H and then the pH for the second H. Um, and then what we can do is we can look at a titration curve and we can actually compare the acid strength. So, a general acid equation is HA breaking apart into uh, H plus plus A minus, and that's a conjugate base, and um, a large K equals product favored, we know that, which would mean a lot of H's or strong acid, but since this is for an acid reaction, it's gotta be Ka. So large Ka means product favored, but also stronger acid. So when I look here, this red line, which is now blue, must be the stronger acid where that K with a very, very low Ka must be the weaker acid. Okay, now, there are points in a titration curve that you must know because they show up all the time. A buffer resists changes in pH. This area that I am boxing travels very far on the x-axis, but not very far on the y-axis. So because this region doesn't really change a whole bunch, this is called the buffer region, right about here, because the slope is about zero. Now, is the slope actually zero? Of course not, because the pH will change, but it'll only change slightly. Also, the half equivalence point, that is where, okay, so let's mark the equivalence point first, and let's say this is 50 milliliters of base added before the color changes. Okay, so at the equivalence point, if you've set it up correctly, that is where the color changes. At the half equivalence point, so that might only be 25 milliliters. That is where the pH equals the pKa, and we'll explain why in just a minute, but that's very, very um, important, and we see that a lot. So here is what I want to look at, is I want to look at a titration curve, and I have a whole bunch of red uh, dots here, and I want to look at what's happening at each point in the titration curve. So initially, Maybe we're right here, and that's really this beaker. Let's say we have four acid molecules, just to make life easier. Ha, 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 and ha. Okay, and as we're going, we're adding some sodium hydroxide, and that's gonna be your most common base added. Well, if we're just a little bit into the titration, if we're doing four molecules, Maybe we still have three 
of our acids, but one of them has reacted. So maybe this first one has reacted. And so now that is a minus. And then we also have HOH because it reacted with sodium hydroxide. So that one has been taken care of. And then we'll go to 15 milliliters, which is our half equivalence point about, or well, 25, let's call this 12.5 milliliters. Okay, so at that point, what we have is half of our acids have reacted. And so we have maybe just two HAs left over, but now we have two A minuses and two HOH. Because this is a buffer region, because the slope is very close to zero, let me show you why the pH equals the pKa at the equivalence point. And it's because for a buffer solution, pH equals pKa plus log of um, your conjugate base divided by uh, just your acid. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase this and I'm going to plug in the amount of molecules I have as an equivalence to the molarity. I have two HAs, so maybe I have two molar of the acid. And I have two A minuses, so maybe that's two molar as well. And if you plug this term into your calculator, the log of two divided by two, or the log of one, this term is actually going to be zero. So it's going to be pKa plus zero. So that is why pH equals the pKa at the half equivalence point. Okay, very important to know. And as we keep going, if we add some more, um, and I'm going to move this here just to make sure that looks right. Okay. As we keep going, we're going to still have an HA left, but if we've added some more sodium hydroxide, Maybe we have three A minuses <coughs> and also three waters. And then at the actual equivalence point, we're going to have four A minuses. All of our acid has reacted. But I'm also going to have four waters. Okay, so this is where moles of uh, acid equal the moles of base. We're going to see that later. And if I keep going, if I go past the equivalence point, and this is way past the equivalence point, so maybe I have still this same amount that I had at the equivalence point, But what I'm going to end up with is anything past the equivalence point is just going to be hydroxide that is added that nothing can react with. And so that's why after the equivalence point, there's a very sharp rise in the pH because there's nothing there to react with it. Okay, so what I can do is I can look at a titration curve and I can get a lot of information. Um, we start with a 20 milliliter sample of acid. We titrate it with 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide, and we get this graph. Okay, the first question says, what is the concentration of the acid? And I'm assuming this is to start out with, so that is before I add anything. Well, the pH equals 2.5. And so um, if I take 10 to the minus pH, which will be 10 to the minus 2.5, that'll give me the concentration of H plus. And so that'll be 3.16 times 10 to the minus 3. But that's not the concentration of the acid. What we're going to need to do is we're going to actually have to get the Ka from here, because what we would have to do is 
set up a rice table. I'm going to show you how it's done. I don't think I'm going to solve it out. Um, and what I know is this is unknown, but it's going to be minus x plus x plus x, question mark minus x, x and x. And this value of the concentration of H plus is x. But the reason I can't solve it is I don't know the Ka, so I have too many unknowns. But what I can do is I can also get the Ka. So if I try to find the equivalence point, which is right here, and I bring it down, I'm going to assume that that is about 20 milliliters. So that means the half equivalence point is going to be 10 milliliters. And at the half equivalence point, the pH is about, let's just say, 5 to make numbers easy. So it says, what's the pKa of the acid? Well, at the half equivalence point, pH equals the pKa. So the pH was 5, and so that equals the pKa. I can take 10 to the minus 5, or 10 to the minus pKa, and that'll give me Ka. So I have 1 times 10 to the minus 5. That'll equal 3.16 times 10 to the minus 3rd squared divided by question mark minus 3.16 times 10 to the minus third, and I know I said I wasn't going to solve it out for that first question, but I might as well. And um, what I'm going to get is, it's going to take a second, but just give me some time, 3.16, 10 to the minus 3 squared, divided by 1 times 10 to the minus 5, plus 3. 1, 6 times 10 to the minus 3, and I got 1.00. Okay, and that should not be too surprising. A lot of acids start, so the ant start at one molar. That's just a common um, molarity. And then the last question, why does pH equal pKa at the halfway point? We've answered this question, but I'll answer it again because it is just that important. Um, the Anderson-Hasselbalch equation says pH equals pKa um, plus conjugate base divided by conjugate or conjugate base divided by just the acid. Well, at the halfway point, those are the same, and so if it's five molar, this is five molar or one molar and one molar. So that um, this is actually log uh, a minus divided by H a, and so because a and a H, A are the same, this term cancels out, and so that's why pH equals pKA.